Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated to a new brushless mini racer. This is the Idea Fly, the Octopus F90 Pro version. So, this model comes after the original brushed edition I reviewed some time ago. Here is the Octopus, this one with brushed motors, and the Pro version now is equipped of. 1104 have brushless motors so we have more or less the same type of ingredients a 600 tvl ieof pv camera jailed into this head of the octopus on top okay we have some built-in prop guards and uh, well and the rest is the electronic associated with a brushless setup so let's discover the contents here is uh, the machine and I will start immediately with the accessories. So what we have, we have just a few basic accessories. So for example, just a basic USB charger uh, ending with a balancer plug for the 2S battery. What we have, a small bag with some 20-35 quarter blade props with the uh, tiny screws to lock the props on the motors. Finally, the last item is the 2S uh, LiPo. It's the same than the F90 brushed edition. It's a 400 mAh power 2S ending with a GST connector and you have the um, balance up plug as well. So if you need some information about the battery, let's measure the weight of it. So about 21.2 grams. And if you need some spare replacement for it, you will need something about 46 by uh, 18 by uh, 14 millimeters okay to fit the battery tray so now let's discover the uh, machine itself and let's compare for example with the original so in terms of size okay uh, you can notice that the prop guards is occupying a more large space but it's still a 90 millimeters machine that's measure a little bit less in fact in paradox 88 compared to the brushed edition okay it's exactly the same diameter so they change completely the prop setup now it's attached through uh, the screws of the prop guards be aware during my, the transportation uh, two of them broke and in general these prop guards are pretty fragile they easily break especially in this section so don't expect they will uh, be super durable okay but exactly the same we have the same kind of bulb installed in front with a 20 degrees more or less uh, tilt angle positive angle that's great and let's measure a little bit some weight information so without the battery we have something about 65.6 gram and if we had the battery we are reaching 86.8 almost 87 gram it's quite uh, light okay and uh, there are some tricks to save this weight and it's more or less uh, indicated associated with the structure of the s uh, the x uh, lower structure so look that we have an x structure with some electronic compounds it means that is not carbon okay it means that the main x structure is directly the pcb with a thickness of if I can measure it well without a wire motor, about 1.5 millimeters. So absolutely no carbon structure with 1.5 millimeters. It means that uh, this frame shouldn't be super durable versus crash. As you can see, look that uh, with a hard crash, I'm afraid the harm will break. Luckily, uh, it's only, I would say, the connection for the light will break, but you will need to change all the lower plates. So let's describe a little bit the uh, lower plate. What we'll find here, four LEDs. They are programmable through beta flight. That's a good point. And two very small, tiny buttons. This one is to reboot if you fail a beta fly flashing you can be able to press on it to rescue your beta flight and this one i would say the more important this is a bind button here i've got the fear sky version it's a fear sky version in g8 without telemetry and it's using ppm connection so a little bit an old-fashioned uh, receiver fear sky receiver i'm 
I would say, I'm honest, I'm a little bit disappointed by the choice of this first sky receiver. Why not as bus with at least telemetry as well as output? So you have the battery tray and no problem to fit the uh, battery. And it's wall jade, no, it won't slip inside. So it's great. And uh, let's power the uh, LiPo. Okay, if I can, like this. And you will see after I configure everything in better flight that we can, for example, apply a Larson effect on the light thanks to the uh, settings in beta flight. So what we have these green LEDs and here on the top, we have some red LEDs associated with the receiver. You will be able to check if it's bound or not, etc. On the rear side, we, you have a statues red LEDs associated with, for example, your current flight modes. Okay, so let's check the motors. So there are some 11 there were four and they announced to spin at 7800 if i'm not wrong so pretty fast and i'm not sure they will support uh 3s even if uh inside when you disassemble the uh main uh, upper canopy by removing this one two three four five six screws you will find a 12 ampere ESC board, the 4 in 1 1 board, supporting um, Bell LEDs and D Shot 600. Be aware, uh, this model comes with uh, good news with the last beta flight version 3.1.7, but uh, beta flight about D Shot 600 is not turned on by default, it's one shot 125. So uh, please check after the uh, configuration in beta flights. So I will raise immediately a big, big, big warning after the, uh, I would say, the fragile, fragile prop guard. It's concerning on the right side, the micro USB port. And uh, if you're not aware, I strongly advise to use a USB cable with a very thin micro USB plug. And first, insert through the prop guard like this. If you insert laterally like this, you will probably damage your micro USB connector. It's what happened to me. And it was almost failing and I managed to uh, save and configure the micro USB, but this time now it's completely broken. I will need to resolder the very thin uh, pads on the rear side on micro USB. It will be a very complex operation. So be aware, the best is almost to remove the prop guard, these four screws to remove and to have a full access to the micro USB connector. So it's a drawback in the design why they didn't, for example, insert the USB port here. There was a lot of free space with a lot of room. Now they decided to use and uh, be aware, use the USB connector like this to enter to your uh, micro USB, okay? Like this, and you won't damage like this your uh, micro USB ports. Uh, look at that, uh, no screws actually under uh, 2035 props. It's okay like this. Uh, I never observed that they pop out uh, mid-flight, but anyway, could happen. In any case, in the bag, you have some screws like this. So if you want absolutely to secure them, no problem. Uh, in terms of uh, OS, we have, as I say, the last beta flight. And I would say, good point, everything is configured. You have some optimized PID settings. You have some optimized OSD uh, layout placement more or less optimized, almost perfect. And also the uh, LEDs are also primable. But uh, as you can see, some little optimization can be done, okay? Uh, especially in terms of frequency, uh, loops, and etc. and optimize a little bit better the LEDs. Um, so I will first conclude this first analysis. A little bit fragile harms, okay, my point of view. Fragile uh, prop guards, so uh, they are quite standard, but this machine is relatively light and uh, there is uh, two things uh, to, uh, you have to do. First of all, it's strongly advised to remove the uh, prop guard to answer the micro USB connector, okay, as I said. And if you want to extend your uh, range, I strongly advise to drill a small hole on the rear to uh, let the uh, fear sky or fly sky antenna pass through, okay? It will, you will extend drastically uh, your uh, range. Also, um, raise a small uh, negative point. There is no bother, okay? What's a pity? Uh, we have a, an OSD, but no bother. So you should add as soon as possible a bother, or in the worst case, 
go to uh, with Bellelli configurator and raise a better volume of each SC at least to the value of 150 and uh, decrease the beacon delay to two minutes. After two minutes, uh, the uh, ESC will start to uh, raise some beep and you will be able to localize your lost model. Okay, so now it's time to check the default Betaflight fly configuration, barely, and check how this machine is uh, a good racer or not. Okay, so let's check the default configuration of the Octopus F90 Pro, the brushless edition. So I will connect and I will check immediately uh, the uh, current version install. So we have an Octavus uh, F3 board. We uh, the last version of uh, Betaflight 3.1.7 up to date, so it's great. I always advise to dump all the settings, okay, and to save into a text file, okay. And uh, in any case, you will be able to restore. So now let's check the default settings, okay, and I will press the setup. I will connect and let's check the port and as you can see I've got only a USB VCP since the uh, first kind of receiver is working in PPM mode no UART uh, port uh, serial are turned turn on, is turned on so everything is uh, off let's continue with the configuration so what we have by default we have one shot 125 okay and uh, uh, we, we don't have any specific board alignment. We are monitoring the VBAT, okay, and the actual frequency uh, for an omnibus is uh, 4 kilos for the zeros, 2 kilos for the PIDs. Could be in increased to 4 kilos both, okay. The default settings for the uh, monitoring, okay, it's 3.3 for the one in cell voltage, 3.2 for the uh, minimum. And what we have, the, uh, pro, the LED strip are programmable, that's great, and it's turned on, obviously, and the, as well as the OSD. No misc name, so if you want. So let's check the default phase safe. We have the full drop, that's great. PIDs, uh, oh, as we can see, we have some uh, optimized uh, PID settings, at least for the pitch and roll. So it's different from the uh, beta faster that 107. So uh, let's check. The rates are pretty slow, so maybe not super adapted for aqua figures and some stuff like this, More, maybe for, for indoors. Uh, the rate of maximum up to, uh, well, the yaw is much faster than the pitch and roll, so maybe you will have to increase these values. And the level strength up to 70, okay. Let's check the featuring settings, maybe I've been done, but uh, maybe, okay. So let's check the, the frequency. So let's continue with the receiver. I will turn on my radio, okay, and as you can see, uh, I've got the settings, so for my uh, deviation takes, I don't have the right uh, channel, okay, so for tyranny should be okay, no specific dead band, no RSSI uh, specific uh, channel. Let's check the mode, we have angle mode on the upper position of your three-way aux switch, aux one, for instance, horizon, okay, the latitude for when the flight mode switch in the middle and acro, okay. No specific air mode or anti gravity, and uh, since there is no bother, beeper is not activated. Let's check a little bit more the OSD information. We have everything in auto, uh, in parallel, and no specific stuff have been done except that maybe the uh, what is turned on the main voltage, artificial horizon, okay, uh, that's all. So some different uh, settings can be adjusted. And let's check now the LED strip. Uh, what we have in four corners, we have the warnings, okay? One, two, three, and zero on the top right, okay? So um, basically, I already produced some optimized uh, values. So what I will do, I will copy the setting and throw it to the uh, CLI, into the CLI. I will copy and save. Okay. And I will show you uh, all the elements I did, the, the change I did. So don't forget to press save. Save. I will repress connecting. Okay. And now let's check what I did. I turn on D shot 600. Okay, obviously. And I add four kilos, uh, turn on the, that strip, it was already done, okay, but 
The fade itself didn't change. PIDs, nothing changed, okay? So I keep the default PID setting. Receiver, I'll turn on for my radio the uh, correct channel mapping, okay? And thanks to my uh, switch, I can have my AUX1 as well here, AUX2. Let's check the mode. I've got uh, the angle mode in upper flight mode switch, a proposition, middle, horizon, and uh, a channel acro plus air mode plus anti gravity. The beeper AUX2, but it, there is no beeper, so it is useless. Let's check the OSD information. So as you can see, I turn on the RSSI. Even if the default Fiasky actually don't offer uh, RSSI in telemetry or specific channel, that's a drawback of this Fiasky receiver. I'm printing the main uh, battery voltage, a crosshair in the middle, very useful, but I remove the artificial horizon or horizon sidebar. I'm printing the flight time and also the throttle position, and I install all these values on the bottom side. For the LED strip, as you can see, I turn on the Larson scanner effect for all of the four uh, corners. It will also provide a nice uh, light effect emitter. So uh, now it's time to uh, check uh, the default configuration. But uh, what I want to show you is also the default uh, uh, after the default BLLE settings. Let's check the default Metafly configuration. Okay, and I will press read setup. And as you can see, we have almost the last version of Beverly. Everything is okay. I will activate break and stop. And since there is no bother, I will reduce to two minutes the uh, increase of the beacon, the beep stress to something more loud, 150. Okay, here is the auto demo flight of the uh, F90 Pro version. Some more uh, addings in my first uh, unboxing comments. First of all, all the PCB and all the electronic inside are covered with some liquid electrical tape. So uh, now the system is waterproof. We should uh, handle very well to uh, uh, land into wet grass without any problems. And um, about the FPVIO camera, I forgot to mention, like the F90, how to tune the frequency, you have this left hole where you have to insert a very small screwdriver. Chop press, you will cycle between the eight frequency inside the current selection V band. And if you long press, you will cycle between the five supported band. Okay, rest band is supported. So it's exactly the same than the first Octopus F19, nothing more. So I will start to fly in loss to show you how punch out out with this machine and then continue in more in FPV. Let's go. So the video is super clear on the FPV signal. I will have. Up. Okay, it's working. Okay, let's check that. Let's check a punch out. Wow, super punchy machine. Impressive for 2S. Wow. The very efficient machine. Yes, incredible. Wild tune. It's fast. Wow, I like. Look that. Let's check in the attitude flips. Well, flips are rates are pretty slow. They have to be increased in beta flight. So now let's go more in FPV.